Hey students, this time for social studies, let's talk about the American Enlightenment and the Great Awakening. So in the 1700s, the Enlightenment was a time of reason and science. The Enlightenment emphasized that reason and science were a path to knowledge, and they were based on natural laws of the universe developed by scientists, such as gravity. Enlightenment thinkers stressed observation and experimentation as means to understanding the world. Thinkers like John Locke applied natural laws to society, saying that ideas about natural rights and government influenced leaders. And while the Enlightenment started in Europe, the movement spread throughout the American colonies and schools of higher learning opened up all across America. Benjamin Franklin is one of the best known colonial American scientists using knowledge, reason, and science to improve society. So here are some important people of the American Enlightenment. We talked about John Locke and Benjamin Franklin. There was also William Blackstone, who said that human laws were natural-like laws of science and simply are waiting to be discovered. He believed that because man was created by God, he was granted fundamental rights by God. And also Baron Charles de Montesquieu. He talked about the division of the state, which is federalism, the foundation of democracy, and the separation of powers of what our government soon would look like in America. So before the 1730s, most of the American colonies had established religions. In the Northeast, in New England, they were mostly what were called Congregationalists, which were basically Puritans. In the Eastern Atlantic and Southern colonies, they were called Anglicans, which was similar to the Church of England. So in the early 1700s, many colonists were said to have lost their religious passion. They had driven the Pilgrims and the Puritans and others to seek out life in America. In the 1730s and 40s, a religious revival began to sweep through the colonies, led by traveling ministers and preachers. They talked about a new birth, which is the ultimate religious experience. And their followers had to accept that they were sinners and that they had to ask for salvation. This is the Great Awakening. So the Great Awakening started a controversy, which was between what was called the Old Lights and the New Lights. The Great Awakening challenged the authority and hierarchy of the established church. The Old Lights were these Congregationalists and Anglicans that we talked about previously. The New Lights were churches that grew as a result of this Great Awakening, and the New Lights were part of the Presbyterian, Methodist, and Baptist religion. The Great Awakening said that anyone could be converted or born again. You didn't need traditional church leadership to help decide if you belonged. So the spread of the Great Awakening began in the New England colonies, and it spread throughout. These traveling ministers and preachers said that the inner religious emotion was more important than their outward behavior. And sermons of that time appealed to the heart and emotions, and they drew large crowds. A prime example written in that day by Jonathan Edwards was entitled Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, a very emotional and intense sermon, and a good example of how those preachers and ministers would talk during that time. So leaders of this movement, again, we talked about Jonathan Edwards and what he wrote. George Whitfield was also an important preacher during this time for the Great Awakening. So the Great Awakening was not only a religious movement, it also encouraged ideas of equality and the right to challenge authority. These ideas inspired future generations to challenge authority, especially the English government, which led to the Revolutionary War and America's independence from England. So that's just a brief introduction to the Enlightenment and the Great Awakening in the American colonies. Along with this video, I'll be posting practice pages for you to work on. If you would like more information, let me know. And if you want to Zoom with me on this lesson, just click on the link in Schoology.